Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be covering two dividend growth stocks that I'm personally close to adding to my portfolio. These are two stocks that I've looked at that I believe the valuation is getting somewhat attractive and that I may add to my portfolio. And so you may see them in my portfolio in the next uh, portfolio update, which will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, right now, my portfolio has a lot of stocks that are not dividend stocks that I've seen uh, very, very good gains in as I saw opportunity, but I do want to keep my portfolio dividend growth oriented. And so these are two dividend growth stocks that may, may be in my portfolio very soon. In my opinion, they're strong businesses trading at fair valuations, which is obviously something you like to see. And before we get into it, you know what we have to do. Let's roll the intro. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. As a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. Okay, so the first stock here, as you can see, is uh, Mondelez International, ticker symbol MDLZ. This is one that is trading at $64 a share, has seen great price appreciation over the past couple of decades, as you can see with great and very consistent earnings growth as well. Now, I do like other stocks in this space like PepsiCo and Hershey's, which I talked about on my X account, that I like these companies, but the one that I actually like most is Mondelez International. They own some iconic brands that I'm sure you know of all across the world. They own Oreos, they own Chips Ahoy, they own Sour Patch Kids, to name a few, which are three very, very iconic brands, which I believe have uh, brand moats and differentiated products in those spaces. Um, if we zoom in over the past five years for Mondelez, you could see that you know share price appreciation has slowed down, and you could actually see that uh, the stock is on quite the dip. It went was uh, at about $75 per share. Now charts trading at $65 per share, or 23 times trailing 12-month earnings. And as you can see, over the past five years as well, earnings has continued to grow. So we could see maybe a little bit of difference in terms of the dip the company's been on and the earnings just continuing to grow and hit new all-time highs of almost a dollar of earnings per share in October of 2024. We can see projections for EPS growth. It's projected to be 8%, 11%. They're projected to have a slowdown in 2025, but high uh, single digit to low double digit earnings growth is what we're projected. And we could actually also see that the price target for Mondelez is at about $75 per share. So signifying about 15% of immediate upside, which is nice to see. Another thing that I like about Mondelez, I mean, that's just like surface level stuff, but uh, what I like about Mondelez is the I like the revenue per share growth. We could see revenue uh, growth accelerating on a per share basis. Yes, the 10-year CAGR is not too high, but the 5-year CAGR of 8.4% and a 3-year CAGR of 12.5% is a lot more attractive on that revenue per share growth aspect. We could also see that margins for Mondelez, I mean, margins for Mondelez have actually improved recently. If we zoom in over the past uh, 10 years on this annual chart, we could see margins uh Gross margins not only are staying stable, we can see operating margins and net margins are getting more efficient as net margins hit an all-time high of 13.77%, other than obviously 2015, uh, which for some reason were unusually high. Um, and so, you know, margins improving, revenues continue to grow. Um, in terms of a free cash flow basis, Mondelez is still hitting all-time highs in free cash flow. And the free cash flow is one of my favorite metrics. And free cash flow per share continues to grow on an annual basis. On a quarterly basis, it doesn't look so clear, but on an annual basis, you could see that it's clear. And um, the free cash flow growth is backed by a very, very fast growing dividend. We could take a look at the company's dividend over the past 10 years, which has just been only dividend growth. And we could see that dividend growth over any time frame has remained over double digits, which I really like to see. We could see a dividend yield of 2.9% and a payout ratio of 40 to 60%, which is the ideal range that I like to see. And you can see the payout ratio chart um, right here where, you know, it's it's around uh, 40 to 60 percent over its lifetime. We could also take a look at the shares of sending where Mondelez is buying back shares that value accretive uh, positions. We could see they're buying back about 0.3 to like 0.7 percent per quarter, which is nice to see that shares uh, declining your ownership slice in the business is increasing. We can also take a look at other ratios for the company, right? Um, we like to see return on capital employed of above, you know, uh, annual return on capital employed and 
I really like return on invested capital as a better metric, but you can see annual ROIC is not the best. I would like to see it, you know, uh, above that 10% mark at least. And it's like seven to like eight. So that's like my probably one of my biggest pet peeves with this business is that return on invested capital, um, right? If we compare it to another company with snacks and beverages um, in the consumer staple space, like PepsiCo, and we take a look at their return on invested capital, it's 15 to 17%. So that's my biggest pet peeve, right? I'm looking to add a consumer staple, but you know, Mondelez may not be the right choice because of that. But other than that, I do like Mondelez better than PepsiCo, right? If we just take a quick look at PepsiCo, we can see the dividend growth is just not there like it is for Mondelez. Yes, PepsiCo is buying back shares, but they're not buying them back as fast. And in terms of obviously for cash flow and revenue growth, I think Mondelez is growing a little bit faster. So that's my biggest complaint with Mondelez. The second uh, dividend stock that I'm close to adding is Nike, ticker symbol NKE. And this one, it's very, very obvious to see the drop that this one was taken. I mean, over the past five years, it's actually lower than it was five years ago. And it seems earnings have continued to grow. Yes, earnings maybe have stabilized as well in the past five years. But I think the drop is far over exaggerated. Um, the street is still expecting after 2025. They're still expecting mid-teens earnings growth. And the company's trading at just 22 and a half times earnings right now. And the dividend yield is over 2% for the first time in a long time. So this is one, you know, with an iconic brand that's well-renowned across the world uh, that, in my opinion, is just beaten down. <clears throat> we can also see that the price target is 106. So we're expecting about 34.5% of upside in the immediate uh, short term, which is nice to see as well. In terms of the key financials for Nike, we could see that revenue is probably one of Nike's strongest suits. Revenue for Nike over the past 10 years has grown 8% per year. Over the past five years, 6.45% per year. And you could see that has slowed down a little bit, which has contributed to the price drop. As we take a look on the quarterly chart, we could see the revenue slow down here. And uh, mainly driven by, I think they're resting on their laurels a bit, right? Running shoes like On and Hoka, you now start to see in stores and people are buying other ones. But I also think it's just the general state of the economy. Um, tariffs are also going to hurt Nike in the short term, which cr may create a long-term buying opportunity for long-term focused investors. And we could see this uh, really focus, hone in on their margins. Um, over the past 10 years, margins have been fine, right? There's no problem with margins, but uh, in the future, if Trump's tariffs do get implemented, and they have already a little bit on China, especially, uh, which Nike manufactures products, and we're going to see some uh, compression of margins in the short term, which may drive the stock price down even further, right? Um, free cash flow for Nike has grown uh, very fast. 10-year free cash flow CAGR of 14%. Let's zoom in over the past 10 years here. Five-year CAGR of 7.5%. You can see it's been slowing down a little bit. Three-year CAGR of 4.7%. And there's a one-year jump. Um, in terms of Nike's balance sheet, this is probably one of the best things about Nike is that they do have a good amount of cash on hand and not too much debt. They're just only $1.8 billion more cash than debt. And the company has a is a massive company and it's a cash cow. So it's virtually nothing in debt. Like they just have cash on hand. In terms of dividend data, it's good that Nike continues to grow their dividend, although it is decelerating a little bit, which is not good to see. Nike's dividend growth of 11.07% is fantastic. Ten, five year CAGR of 10.3%, three year CAGR of 9.5%. And they recently just hiked their dividend 8.1% despite the financial pressures. So, you know, this is another one that I'm looking to add to my portfolio, like I said. And payout ratio for both free cash flow and earnings per share is under 40%, which is nice to see. Shares outstanding for Nike continues to decline as well. Um, over the past 10 years, I mean, continual share decline, which is nice to see. I like to see Nike buying back shares here. And we can see that they're buying back shares at quite an aggressive rate, close to 1% per quarter and uh, recently because of the depressed price. And we can see annual shares are declining by 2.5%. So your slice of the business is going up immensely. Now, I do want to take a look at the return on invested capital, which is my favorite metric to look at for capital efficiency for quality businesses. I like to see above 10% uh, bare minimum. I like to see above 15%. Return on invested for capital for Nike has consistently been above 15%. So this is a check in the box for Nike. It's a very good sign to see annual return on invested capital uh, be so high. So Nike, I mean, it's another one that looks attractive in my opinion, right? So Mondelez and Nike are two dividend stocks, two dividend growth stocks that I'm looking to possibly add to my portfolio when I have companies that I'm not, I have, I have a couple companies in my portfolio that I'm not uh, too long-term, you know, oriented in that I do want to get rid of. 
Um, and that's why I'm holding off on the portfolio update a little bit. That is, will be on here on dividend data, by the way. Um, there is a Black Friday sale as well on dividend data, 50% off through Monday. So if you want to check that out, check that out in the description. We're going to have dividend data right on top of the description. It's a very good platform that I use for my stock analysis videos. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.